Hi, welcome to a a la prima demonstration of a portrait head. Today I'm going to walk you through all the steps of getting a female profile portrait painted on this, which is a 8 by 8 inch cradled wood panel, cradled birch panel, that has been primed with uh, three coats, maybe four coats of acrylic gesso, and then one coat of really thin down um, oil paint so that it's, you know, pretty transparent, but it did knock the value back a little bit. Um, there's a good deal of texture on this panel from the milling process, which I think should be interesting. Let's see what happens. The photo resource that I'm going to use today is actually a piece of stock art and I've got it on my mini tablet right next to the painting panel. Um, I will make this resource available to anybody who's watching. I'll have a link down in the description where you can download, download this as well. This is free stock art. And uh, it is available for use if you wanted to paint along. Feel free, go ahead. It's, uh, I don't usually use stock art because they usually, well, my main reason is because they usually are wearing like a lot of makeup. <laughs> and I prefer to paint faces that don't have a lot of makeup on them. But this one, as you can see, uh, pretty good as far as makeup is concerned. So I thought that this would be interesting and I like the, the profile, etc. This is my palette. It's on glass with a just a piece of white poster board behind it. My pigments for today are titanium white, yellow ochre, what's called bright red, from Winsor Newton, which is a high chroma red in the middle of the value range. Brown pink, which is a high chroma red in the lower part of the, of the value range. This is made by Gamblin. Permanent alizarin crimson, another high chroma red in the lower part of the value range, but this skews towards blue and this skews towards yellow. So kind of an orangey red, kind of a purpley red. Ultramarine blue, Van Dyke brown, and which black is this? Ivory black, ivory black. The first thing I want to do is I want to place the drawing on the panel. In other words, the first thing that I want to think about is the composition. You know, where is the where are the boundaries of what I'm looking at? I'm not using any medium. The way that I think about this is that I can go pretty high on the panel and I can come back pretty far. But what you can't do is put the profile way over there. You cannot center a profile head and leave no space over here. If I wanted to totally center this head as a profile, I would have had to make it really small. But that would make for a kind of a difficult demonstration, honestly. So since I want a, a larger sized head, it has to be pushed this way. So before I begin really drawing what I'm doing, I want to make sure that the composition is going to be satisfactory. Yeah. 
yeah that works for me The reason that I'm using paint instead of charcoal or pencil is because the panel already has oil paint on it, so uh, pencil is not going to show up really good without me actually using a lot of pressure, pressure which I don't want to do. So my choice is to use charcoal, which I would have to fight against or to just go ahead and start using paint. Uh, I prefer to use paint anyway because I find paint to be a lot faster. If I start using charcoal, what I'm going to do is end up thinking about making a drawing, you know, and th that impulse to finish the drawing instead of just being something that I'm laying in. Uh, it's, a, it's a bad habit and I should probably break it, but I know I know how I am So I'm just using Van Dyke Brown and uh, Brown pink To lay this in so I'm making a, a very very warm brown brown pink is really similar to burnt sienna and transparent If you have burnt sienna plus a little bit of lizard and crimson it's basically the same thing using um, straight lines I'm trying to get a feel for the proportions and the drawing here placement of the bottom of the eye. So she, she's not just a profile, but the angle is from underneath. So we see a lot of the space under the chin. And then, so that everybody else knows what's going on, the position of the ear relative to the nose kind of tells us that this, this entire ovoid is tilted backward. So here's a, a straight line dropping this in, and I know that the, the ear is a little bit taller than that, or higher than that rather, I'm sorry. There we go. The arch of the eyebrow and the the closeness to the edge of the forehead. These are all indicators of the position of the face, and I love these things. And um, in paintings, you know, like Waterhouse paintings, where you just have this almost exaggerated position of the eyebrow to show. 
Ah, oh, lovely. Where that is. I mean, I know I realize that the eyebrow is a detail that you can wait until the end, but for me, this kind of anchors it. So the eyebrow is here, and then I'm gonna follow the eyebrow ridge around to show where the eye is actually placed. Just keeping, just not too much paint. I mean, I, on the one hand, I want to give myself enough information to move forward. And on the other hand, I don't want to be placing um, so much paint on the surface that I'm going to be fighting with this going forward. Um, another thing I should mention is I have no intention of painting the arm that you're going to see in the resource photo. It's just not... Uh, useful to me, honestly. This is my mall stick, don't be alarmed. Okay. On the plane, on the underplane of the nose, we can see a little bit of the far nostril, but I'm gonna leave that detail for kinda of later on. Right now, I'm more interested in the position of the nostril itself. And the reason I use a warm uh, paint color to draw with is that a lot of this will remain either visible or will help with the layers that are placed over it, you know, by providing a foundation for the dark accents and so on. from the bottom of the nose to the chin. You divide that in half, and that's like the bottom of the lip. So here, this is the bottom of the lip. the separation of the lips to be in segments, straight line segments. And I'm ending here, so drop straight line down from the eye. That is the outside corner of the mouth. The upper lip a bit. The upper margin of the upper lip, not quite a horizontal line. And then the lower lip, as we can see, actually, so this plane here is facing that away, and that's why the angle seems so 
extreme. Because we we don't we're not actually seeing the whole lower lip. We're seeing we're seeing it in perspective. All right, cool. The basic way that I approach any painting, especially an Al Prima painting, because you, you don't have a lot of room to really screw it up, is um, observe, analyze, solve, execute. So some of the things that I'm doing here in the underdrawing are kind of like notes to myself for later. I'm thinking about What, I'm actually thinking about like what hue I'm going to use in that nostril to make it not look like, you know, a tunnel, a train tunnel, a little scary, um, but still make it more or less correct. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. Okay, there we go. Um, and that observe, analyze, solve. procedure for me is like solving I, I think of it as solving the, the puzzle of what I'm looking at which honestly is why I love to do studies now I used to hate to do studies because I felt like I was you know wasting time everything was like so uh, urgent had to be done super duper fast and now I realize that there's so much value in the, the meditation, the contemplation of the thing. One thing I want to do is um, in the resource photo, I feel like the neck, the, the structure of the neck is a little bit exaggerated like she has this kind of like bulge right about here and I don't want to put that in there so I'm not going to I'm going to change it slightly I love circles. My intention for the bottom of the painting is a kind of a fade into fog, so I'm not not really worried about which way the hair is going, other than it anchors this corner and kind of lets everything else happen up in here. Um,
and the neck too because because I'm in inventing the morphology I'm not gonna go super crazy with it I'm just gonna let it be a hint a hinted thing I think that'll help alrighty so Moving on, give myself a little room here. There are a bunch of different ways for me to approach this here. Uh, the, the way that works for me with Ala Prima is to create an environment and then build from there. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to paint in the background and then I'm gonna start with the darkest darks. It's much, much easier for me to have a background to judge the, the, the hues in the face against it against that, even though I see so many other painters who could just like paint a head out of thin air and then do the background later. For some reason, I never developed that kind of skill. So let's go for some background first. Um, just like the photo reference, I kind of wanted to go to purple, but I'll tell you what, just because I'm really digging purple these days. However, since hopefully some of you will actually go get the photo resource and try this yourself. Let's use the color that the photo resource uses. So this is ultramarine blue, ivory black, a smidge of alizarin crimson and titanium white. And that's going to give us a neutral kind of blue. And then just to make it go on with some alacrity, I'm going to use some uh, liquid. Do you have to use liquid? No, of course you don't have to use liquid. You could just kind of, you know, use some elbow grease. That'll work. But I'm feeling froggy, so here we go. If you don't have liquid, you can use like anything, really. Any oil. You can, you can do straight paint. You can use a few drops of any kind of oil, like uh, walnut oil or what else? Linseed oil. Look, I'm, I'm looking at my my basket of goodies over here. Looking at all the different things you could use. Really, you can use anything. I like to keep the backgrounds very thin to begin with. And now you're probably saying, oh my gosh, Lisa, that color is so close. And I, yeah, I know. Keep it loose. I've always had kind of a, um, a special liking for these monumental heads, you know, with uh, strong necks, strong features, strong necks, a little bit of drama. And this one really fits the bill. It's kind of 
I was kind of disappointed actually that it was on a uh, on a stock photo site and meant that I really couldn't use it for any kind of serious personal work. Around the edges I'm going to be, you know, pretty pretty careful because this is a chance to fix or amend anything that in my drawing that I think needs slight alterations. And it's I do have a habit of overstating the nose. I'm such a fan of noses, so I want to make sure I didn't do that. And even kind of edge in a little bit over the borders of where she really is so that when I come back in with the positive shapes, I edge back out into the background, which will give her a sense of volume, you know? Uh, which goes to show goes goes for you as well if you uh, if you do follow along and and do this painting yourself uh, you can't really claim it's an original work because you're you would be copying off of my instruction and using a commercially available reference photo so not I wouldn't recommend it but they do make delightful gifts how do I feel about this forehead I think there we go Bring the background up a little bit in here so to facilitate that fogginess that I mentioned a while ago. Peak of the forehead is at the outside edge of the eyes, and that's right here. Super duper. I want to make sure I have enough room here. All right. One more thing. Yes, you heard that right. I am holding a brush between my teeth. Yep. Move on to the darks. Now, first thing I want to do is I'm going to gently kind of like scrub in my darkest darks. So we're going to go Van Dyke Brown, Alizarin Crimson. I'm sorry, Van Dyke Brown. Brown pink, a little bit of blue. Hey, interesting story. The word brown pink, uh, or the 
phrase brown pink. If you go on the Gamblin website, they explain why it's called brown pink when it's really not what we think of as pink, you know, at all. And apparently, the word pink didn't always mean what we think it means. It didn't always mean a, uh, you know, low chroma or a, a, a light value red, basically. It used to, pink used to mean something totally different. And there were brown pinks, yellow pink, red pink. Uh, but that's on the Gamblin website. And I am focused right now, so I cannot remember that story. Oops, let's get this shadow where it actually goes. Okay. Because I move the neck, I can't use the exact shadow that's in the reference photo, right? It wouldn't make any sense. So, I'm going to kind of use, just use part of the reference shadow. Because in the reference, this, this shadow is actually really well defined and it comes out to here. But since I move the neck back, the shadow can't be in the same place. Now if you copied this painting exercise onto a larger panel and you wanted to use the full reference photo, you could probably use the same neck, the real neck, and use that shadow. Gently going in here. See the, the um, there is a secondary lighting source in here, as you can kind of tell. It's not super strong. It's not as strong as the primary lighting source, which is from above and kind of warm. But you can see that there's a secondary lighting source, which is casting a cool light this away, like a fill or a bounce or something like that. And I mean, that's fine. I'm gonna try to just ignore it. I'm certainly not going to exaggerate it because it doesn't really, it doesn't really do anything for me. Not, not the painting I have in mind. You know, I get to, this I kind of figured out, you know, after some years of painting, it, it is hard enough to learn how to make the materials do what you want. Um, but at some point, you've learned to make the materials do what you want, and now you're like, well, well okay, well, what am I going to do with that? And I usually just go back to the analogies of being a musician, you know, once once you're an apt musician, what are you going to do with it? Well, you're going to make decisions on the fly and they're going to feel very, very natural to you. But first you have to learn to control your instrument. Um, at the summaration of the lips, I'm going to go ahead and Pump the hue. Um, to a more red. Even though I can't really see that in the photo, I know I'm going to want it. You probably hear the wind blowing outside. It is a lovely fall day. It's 
Sun's going down way faster than it should. And here we are. Okay, and then to me it is very important to black in the hair. So I'm gonna go with ivory black and brown pink and Van Dyke brown giving me a nice rich dark brown because if I can't see you know the dark mass of the hair I'm going to have a harder time seeing how dark the shadow under the chin should be how dark the nostril should be etc so I kind of want to get this in here so I know where my backstop is Um, I, <laughs> it is important to me, and it will probably be important to you, to let the hair sit behind the earring. Just trust me, that makes a difference. And yeah, this is this is bouncing around a little. I have a, uh, I use a drafting table as an easel so that I can have my palette right next to it and then I set up blocks on the the pencil guard at the bottom to lay my stuff on top of so that's what I've got down here is got a, a coaster holding this thing aloft so that it'll be at the right height um, for you actually These little bits of very, very thin areas will read as highlights right away. So I'm gonna let them, let them be. And then in the front, um, which you probably can't really see because of the shadow on her arm, there is a little bit of hair falling over to the other side. So I just want to have that in there. Great. Oh, 
Okay. So I'm already kind of dissatisfied with my darkest darks and I want to get them in here a little bit better. Okay. I'm not 100% confident that the chin is going to be satisfying in the long run here, but let's, let's see what happens. There we go. Okay. The, um, the dark light, go so back in here, and then in the pit of the eye are going to be my next move. Because as far as light and shadow goes, when we're, when we're looking at this, really we've got shadow here, here, here. And the rest is kind of from light to dark light. So I want to mix that first. I'm going to start with yellow ochre, brown pink, and I'm going to mix up quite a substantial size, well for me substantial, sized pile here. I want to cool that down with some ultramarine blue and a little Van Dyke brown. And I want to leave that right there because <laughs> that was my my starter, my mother, and add some titanium white. Can't forget your mother. Take some of this. I'm going to add some titanium white. Probably too much. That's probably too much. Titanium white. And a little more blue. Now, the titanium white is going to cool it down anyway. 
blue's gonna cool it down even further. And I think that's gonna get us kind of in the general neighborhood of our lighter lights, which it totally is. Okay, great. And then, so these are, these are like the starter hues, right? They're not the final hues, but they are a decent starting point. Dark light, medium light, light light. Not a highlight. Highlights come later. Here we go. This is a filbert number two. I love filberts. I like the way they can go from a sharp edge to a, a nice way of, of filling in a large area. Um, just lickety split. I'm going to start in the darker areas here. And I suspect, yeah, back here at the edge of the jaw, I am seeing it a little, a little more blue. I'm going to give myself that. And then in this... It's a, a warmer modulation there. Then here at the, the back, I want to go to the to the nostril. And I realize it's not quite that that warm, but I, I want it to be. So we're just going to kind of model the most obvious forms. Using these three light values as a starting point. And that should get us that should get us pretty far actually. So up here in the eye, the thought process is, okay, if this is the dark light, then this, which is also not as bright as the brighter parts, but it is slightly lighter than this. So everything is relative to everything else. So I want to go with the lighter value, but warmed up a little bit. To indicate the orbital ridge and then coming down to the temple it cools off with a little bit of blue
the uh, bridge of the nose I'm also seeing is cooler, which I think has something to do with the lighting effects more than what I would expect because the skin is thinner on top of the nose. A lot of times it actually goes more towards a like a yellow tone, but here I'm seeing it cool, so I'm going to paint it cool. And then my neutral here. So in other words, the, the my starting point, the one that I premixed, right? Up in the forehead, I added a little bit of yellow ochre to my second light. So we talk about like the um the the regions of the face, you know? So color regions. More yellow ochre, more warmth, more cool. The the reasoning being the skin in the forehead is closer to the bone, so it has more of a yellow cast. There is more blood here, more surface capillary blood here, and so that'll be warmer. Here, the shadow, this is this is cooler, especially it's much cooler in men for you know reasons of five o'clock shadow. But it's a little bit cooler in women too. Although if you um if you make it too cool for a woman's portrait, it will make her look like a dude. Fun fact. In fact, down here, I think I'm going to give myself a little bit of a um, a cool half tone for funsies, so that I can round this form. That's nice. And cool half tone here too, in the throat, um, places like the chest and the throat you'll see mm, some some bluish values too because there's so much venous blood around in there so I'm gonna take my what do we think I'm thinking medium light here oh that was way too much blue what the heck oh Lisa Okay, whew, scary, right? And don't forget, we did not mix the highlights yet. So if it's light, if it's the lightest light, then, you know, I'm going to block it in light. If it's medium, I'm going to block it in medium. The, the tiny little um, variations uh, we're not working on yet. Okay, that's nice. And then here at the top, I want to make sure that I've really got... This is what's closest to the light, so I want to make sure that it is established. This is my lightest light. Yes, sir, Bob.
And now it's starting to kind of come together. Sometimes you got to have a little faith, you know? The ear is pretty subtle. I, I already want to go in and really look at the smaller forms and model them, but I'm not going to do that because I know that they don't actually have a place to live yet, so it would be fruitless to begin modeling at this point. It would be sort of like laying in the wrong Legos in the wrong order. The real risk there is is what? Well, it's just um, sort of like a starting your count from from three or four instead of starting your count from one like you're still counting it's still kind of correct but if you don't start from one it's very very easy to lose your place just like if you don't start from the dark and build your way up to the light it's very easily easy to lose your place When you're looking at the um, the light on the chin, don't forget that the brightest light is up here. And so anything that you're doing in the chin has to be subordinated to the brightest light up there. So I'm gonna get the chin in here and it's gonna look too dark and that's okay because It's really not, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say, is that it, it is relative to the lightest part of the face, it is correct. There we go. Not bad. I think I, I sucked all the warmth out of her neck here. That's okay. We'll fix. We'll. That'll add to the uh, impression later. So for her her lips, I'm going to take a little bit of alizarin crimson and a little bit of brown pink and mix them into my dark lights. For the upper lip, which is darker. I want to make sure that I get the, the sense that it is a rounded form. And then the bottom lip, which is actually much, much lighter.
And then real, real quick for the earring, bloop, bloop, bloop. Some Van Dyke Brown. And a little bit of blue. Now that I have the block in pretty much established, I'm going to move on to modeling the details. And this is going by pretty, pretty quickly, which is great if I were in a, you know, live modeling situation. This is basically the method that I would use because it would get me results pretty quickly. If I were working on a commission portrait, though, I, I would approach this a little bit differently. I'd probably start with a a bistre or some other kind of uh, single color underpainting um, because I think that the way that that shows through in later layers, and I'd like to use three, four, five layers, um, the way that shows through is just so lovely. But here's what we're doing right now. So uh, since we're all blocked in, now I'm going to start again with the with the darkest features. Now, um, it would be great if I was the kind of person who just methodically went from thing to thing to thing, and I think that I used to be, but now I kind of bounce around. And I'm sorry if that bothers anybody, but that's uh, that's the thing is. The more portraits that I've done, I've found that starting with the nose or the eyes on this section um, really works for me. So here, I'm going to start on the nose. I'm using the same paints that I already pre-mixed. They are still over there, those three versions of light. If I need to, I can always pump up the chroma by adding alizarin crimson or brown pink. I'm using a, a smaller brush with a pretty light touch here because I'm laying the paint on thicker than I did before. Now, I like to do something that, you know, I noticed other painters who are far, far better than me doing, which is letting the nose be a little bit darker. Just a tiny smidgen of a little bit darker so that the highlights will pop out like crazy.
you hear the, the shape of the rear of the nostril kind of. Yeah, there we go. It's nice and dark, but underneath I find that there's, you know how after a while you start really paying attention to certain things because they seem like subtle hallmarks that you just can't leave out. So the, the bottom of the nostril, not the flesh on the outside, but the bottom is going to tell you a lot about where the light is, what the light is doing. So I want to make sure it's getting the right amount of light on it. And I'm just using the same colors that I used before, sometimes adding a little warmer or cooler hue to get tiny variations. There we go. Now here, where the cheek comes in, it is definitely, definitely warmer. But then up here at the little pit, you can see a little bit of venous bluing. Now, are you really seeing this? You know, when you're looking at a picture, um, you just don't know. You could be looking at something that the photographer kind of just thought was a good idea to throw in a filter that was put on. You don't know. So kind of kind of use your, your judgment here. I do know that I want the shadow from the eyelashes to be softer than the eyelashes themselves. Oh, um, am I happy with the nose? I think, kind of, I want to go a little bit more yellow on the bridge. And I'm stroking, you know, across this form. Yeah, that's good. And just so I can eyeball it and see where I am, I'm going to lay in highlights on the nose in a little bit of a pale purpley violet kind of color. So the end of the nose is a ball. The ball has a highlight on it right there. Nostril, totally different ball, highlight on it here. And then I'm kind of bouncing the brush in there to, to keep it very, very soft because I'm not completely done with that area, but I do want to be able to see the light. And now I see the light. And once I see the light, then I can look again at the bridge of the nose and go, oh, wait a second. So it's lighter here, but then it is darker up there. Put this back in.
Right now, what's really annoying me is the color of the lips. <laughs> it's true. I have to fix this. This is bothering me. The lips are actually much more of a blue red than an orange red. And this orangey red isn't helping me. So I'm going to dull this down and get this back in here. Even though, you know, what, what I've already done is actually going to be fine underneath it. It's just something that is throwing me off. So I need to address it right now. Cool it down slightly because it has the upper, as the plane of the mouth folds away from us, curves away from us, it is indicated by a slight cooling. That's just a million times better. Hmm. Mm hmm. My lighter value, I'm going to take my, okay, I'm gonna keep the, uh, the color on the lips pretty toned down for now. And determine later where, where I need to go with them because they can, the color of the lips can really overpower a painting or it can totally change the change like the mood of it so I want to give myself enough uh, like I don't want to be feeling like it's wrong right now you know I don't want it to be distracting me but I also don't want to finish it because I might need to walk it back Very subtle. Okay, back up to the eyes. Paint in the shadow first. And determine how it, you know, how it changes, how it dissolves. Now this sharper edge of the eyelid against that shadow is very, very important. And then the shadow itself has a very fuzzy edge where it changes, in, changes into the next value. Those um, juxtaposition of hard edges and soft edges with these little forms is how you make things recede or kind of advance toward the viewer. There is some warmth on the eyelid. I'm not going to go crazy with that.
I want this to be, my vision for this is something that is very subtle. Kind of dreamy, which I think is fitting, you know, for the, uh, the closed eye profile. Just love the closed eye profile. I'm gonna get this shadow underneath the eye, uh, underneath the eyelashes, really. So right here, it is darkest, right? And then it's got the hardest edge. And if you look closely, you can see that the way that that shadow works is it describes the form of the cheekbone underneath it, or the cheek muscle musculature underneath it by its lower edge. I'll put this in first. And then I can get to the eyelashes. And eyelashes, okay. I mean, yeah, don't go all the way super blacky black. But, so I'm going black and um, Van Dyke brown and brown pink. So it'll be the blackest thing here. Even a little bit more than the nostril is but if you do just pure blue black it's going to it's gonna feel like not quite the right color because it's too cool another thing is the top edge of the eyelashes actually describe the orb of the eye so they are not a straight line they have an arc to them Like the nose got a little a little too big which I think I warned you I do I just really like noses and I can get a little overzealous so I'm, gonna, I'm using a, um, a dry brush to kind of push the background over here and reshape the tip yeah, okay, I can see how that might be a little closer. While I'm here, move this highlight a little bit. Okay. She's quite pretty. I'm pretty pleased with how this is going right now. Uh, you know what, another thing I noticed was that the back edge of this nostril There we go, that's a little better So what this is, is, is just a dry brush So what you notice that I didn't do is uh, paint the thing and then like Blend everything in and then paint it again. Eh. If you if you keep working the surface, you're basically blending anyway. So blending it as like a step to undo the work that you just did just seems like uh, just delays your 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 progress there. And yes, I did just knock my highlight out, but that's okay. It's 
So my uh, battery on my camera is not playing along with me very well, which is why we're having this. I'm a little bit all over the place here. I have to keep swapping out the battery. I bought a new battery from Amazon and for some reason it's holding no charge at all. Like half an hour. That's just not right. So Here I've got a, a light plane, but that is still very subtly turning. So at the top of the upper lip, here we go. Then at the corner of the mouth, it's uh, got the shadow, of course, here at the corner of the mouth. And that is so important to the expression of the mouth. You want to make sure that that is definitely expressed correctly. I know I keep saying that I'm like not gonna mess with the mouth right now, I'm gonna work on it later, and then I keep messing with it. Well, that's just where we are. Alrighty. There we are. Yes, yes, yes. Now I'm going to do something a little bold here. I'm going to take some warm and I'm going to chuck it into my middle light. And by warm, I mean that bright red that I showed you at the beginning, the winter red. And I'm going to, woo, get in here with something that is going to be not quite the right color. See, not quite the right color. Why? Because since I did do some pre-mixing here, I, I don't want to be in the situation where I have drained the blood out of her. You know, the, where I'm being a little too formulaic. So I, I'm kind of uh, mixing it up by throwing a variation at myself and now I'm gonna to have to walk my way back out of it and that's okay I know I can <laughs> I've done this to myself many many times but it's kind of a, a a way for me to shake myself out of a habit that I know that I have So now I have to force myself to actually model the planes of the cheek and really think about what, what are the warm values, where are they placed. Cute. And how does this actually turn to the dark light.
Now, is it going to be too much? It probably will be. Um, and that's okay. Again, looking at old masters and how they exaggerated some parts of the face, um, there are just certain things that I like. I like the nose to be too dark. I like the cheeks to be a little bit too pink. To me, that those are some of the, the decisions that you can make to make your work more evocative than just a photograph is going to be. I'm not criticizing photographs. I like photography, but it's not the same. The, the point is to have the artist's hand, the artist making decisions. So here, see, I'm going to go from this peaky pink into the less vivid colors of the the dark light. And that's going to give me most of the form underneath the cheekbone. I'll follow it to here. And then it gets a little bit lighter for a second as the these are two forms across the cheekbone and then across the jawbone with a little bit of a hollow in between them so even though it is very very subtle and a lot of people choose to do this just as one like boop one curve blip totally a legit choice but I'm going to model it as two curves I even want to make sure that at the back edge of the cheekbone, oof, I like it. Um, I'm seeing, you know, the darkest part right, right here, right in that hollow. I'm going to cool down the middle light with some ultramarine blue for the space around the muzzle of the mouth. That's going to give me That's going to give me this underplane so that I can show the form of the chin itself. I really want to mess with the corner of the mouth. Just just a little bit. I'll just mess with it a little bit and then I promise I'll stop. Okay, 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 okay. Oops. See, I just messed with it a little bit. Because <laughs> I need to be able to, at the top here, there we go. make sure that this cool half tone is actually doing its job and its job is to turn the form from light into shadow as the chin goes down yeah yes 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 good
nice cool values in here. You know, this is a this is pretty subtle. I mean, I want you to be able to see this form, but I also want to keep this hierarchy of lights is very very important for me because to be completely frank with you, most people are going to be looking at that part of the face, right? So, your job down here around the chin is to hold that part of the face up. And if you overstate your highlights, then you're not doing your job. So I just want a little bit of light, less than you could actually see in the resource photo, to be completely frank. And speaking of which, in, in the resource photo, this part has that blue cast to it, has that secondary light, so I'm gonna blow that away, I don't want it. That doesn't help me. Here. The underpainting is set up enough now that I can gently brush over it. And while this is still quite thin paint, It is allowing me to get another layer in here, get these darkest darks to do their job. See, I told you that the, the neck looked too blue. But I told you it was gonna work out. Here we are. This is the cast shadow from the earring. This is, I want a sharp edge right here. Okay. Okay, well, oh, it's working pretty good here. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit bluer. The texture is, is letting me um, fill in like the, the little gaps in the surface here. That's part of what's allowing me to make this a little bit darker. It's filling in those gaps. Now I'm, I'm not using any medium here. I'm really just using straight paint, but with a very, very light touch. part. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to leave this all alone soon because at some point you end up just like yanking paint right back off. I don't want to do that. Okay, back to the corner of the mouth. Can't stop messing with it. But softening it. Oh, pretty. Nice, that works. And since that worked, that means I can get corner in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, back up to the eyelashes. That's where we were. What after, before I went on this little side quest here. Um, what I was saying ages ago now, I think, before my battery ran out, was that the top edge of the eyelashes actually describe the shape of the eyeball underneath the lid. So, you want to look for how that curves. Pretty. 
beauty. This is a little too light here, it's distracting me. There's a, a she is wearing a tiny bit of makeup, Ugh. which is unfortunate, but I'm gonna ignore that and try to simply trace the forms underneath. Nice. Um, but it, it does have a certain amount of warmth to it. Okay, fine. Um, so I'll, I'll put some of that warmth in here. But really, I just want a very delicate curved shape here. The you could see in the resource photo that there are there is some indication of wrinkles across the eyelid. I'm going to leave that just implied. I'm not going to put that in very strongly and the reason is even on most portraits um, adding in wrinkles or something like that doesn't really do you a whole lot of a whole lot of favors until you've you've been spending you know session after session on a portrait but in Alla Prima I think you, you you need to avoid getting stuck in those kinds of details it doesn't really so I want to finish modeling the brow ridge. At the back here, it seems to be a little cooler as the, the form recedes. And the lightest part is going to be this. Keep those edges soft. Pretty sure everybody uses their finger to blend, right? I think so. Make sure this top plane of the cheek actually looks like a top plane. Mm-hmm. I'm going to simplify this here. This shadow moving up into the eyebrow area. So there's a, a tiny little bit of the other eyebrow visible over here. I'm just gonna check it in there and see, you know. Just keep it very soft. Okay, so what's going on with his ear? Not a whole lot. It's, uh, we're gonna play it very, very subtly. I've already established the shadow in front of it, so using warm values, I just wanna make sure that there is a front and a back. 
keep it very, very subtle. Mm -hmm. That's satisfactory. Mm -hmm. So here, okay, let's go back to the nose for a sec. Because I actually feel like this is going to be done in not too long now. So first I want to make sure that my lights are here. I would like a light right at the top of this plane. Okay, that's nice. So here on the on the side of the nose is a little sliver of this plane. So I want to make sure I've got this in before I lay the highlight in. Yeah, that's nice. So white, titanium white, and a little bit of blue, and a little bit of alizarin crimson. Give myself like a, <sighs> the crimson just blew me away as it always does. Give myself a really light lavender for my actual highlight here. Okay. This one, good. And like I said, the ball of the nose has got one right up here. Good. And nice shiny eyelid. <laughs> This one is sort of secondary, so I'm gonna let it fade into the area around it, but I like the way it looks. Uh, I wanna blend this. Oh my gosh, if you're actually watching this at this point, I forgot to say. Please remember to like and subscribe. Um, I'll be doing new demonstrations every week going forward. And I have lots of, of videos already available. Upper lip. Got away from me a little bit here. I want to bring it back. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a tiny little highlight at the ridge of the upper lip here, and there often is, especially in women.
Now, if this wasn't all a prima and I was going to take this to uh, a higher degree of finish than I'm going to be able to get to, I let the whole thing dry. And then I would basically do the exact same thing, but with uh, um, thicker paint. And bring it, bring it up to a much more substantial surface. The reason that I need the neck in here is because I need to be able, uh, I need to have a, a foil for the earring. Otherwise, you know, you don't, you don't have to have a full neck experience. Back to this upper lip. I'm gonna take the shadow color and a very little bit of alizarin crimson. I think that's what I'm not liking is going too, too, too high chroma. You want to keep the edge of the upper lip soft. There we go, that's better. Hmm. And now the lower lip, same thing. I'm not gonna go too intense on the, on the pink. And is it gonna let me not go too intense? Eh, no. So that ain't right, but it's interesting. I was just kind of wondering, like, what would happen if I went too bright on the lower lid? Well, that's what happens. So this is just to blend it in. You know, sometimes when you're blending, you're just blending, and sometimes when you're blending, you're actually, like, scooping up with tiny little bristly shovels. Here we go. Good, good, good. Huh, interesting. Um, then the shadow under. Nice, okay. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna smoosh. I'm gonna take the background in a dry brush and just push the paint in a little bit here because I want to reshape this upper lip. Another thing that you can do when you come back for like another session is um, really hit, glaze your darks even darker, you know?
painting transparently sometimes it's a little difficult to get the darks as dark as you want them awesome now moving on to the earring I'm going to start with the dark and the shadow And I'm going to do some ultramarine blue and brown pink. And describe this form. Now see, I'm going around the outside when I'm leaving. Kind of a bare edge there. I have no intention of painting this earring like, you know, very realistically, but I think I can imply it pretty good. Titanium white, ultramarine blue, Van Dyke brown. And I'm squinting down to see. Okay, first I want to go into this edge and describe it. And I'm, my brush is around, so it comes to a pretty good point. Leave this loose though. If, you, if you're doing a painting in multiple sessions, you can afford to really tinker with the earrings, but I'll for you and And then, so this is the middle value. Boop. Okay. So I'm gonna go. I'm describing a curved disc, a parabolic disc, right? I'm scumbling, dragging the lighter paint over the underpainting. Okay, I'm going to add even more titanium white. Hubba. And I'm going to give myself some highlights on the hardware here. Boop, boop. Sorry about the sound effects, folks. That's just how life is. And a highlight on the very edge. Carefully, carefully, carefully. It's really easier if you could do this all at one instead of wiping it out and starting over. But of course you could always wipe it out and start over. Okay. E -e 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 -e. Smoosh it on there. Then a bristle brush. And I'm going to stab at it. until it gives me an impression of texture. Maybe we got a, a light side, dark side. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go a little bit more white into my mixture there, come back in. This time I'm gonna do a bit of a zigzag pattern because some of this will remain. Mm -hmm. And a bit of a line here. Back to stabbing.
cool. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to take this highlight here and just bleh, knock it back. This is distracting me, I thought. And right here. What am I looking at? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give myself a little bit more. Um, this is really a dumb idea, actually. I should not be attempting any kind of detail here. Let's call you done. Yeah, maybe. You're done. All right. So, last thing, hair. Hair. Uh, brown pink. Ivory black. So we've already got a, a, a general color for the hair. I'm going to come in here and do the darkest parts some more. with a warm value. So I lay in the highlight and then I comb it out with a bristle brush. Then I lay in the highlight again and it out, but you know, I'm gonna leave the center of it so it has a little bit of volume to it. I, I can't, <laughs> gotta have a light touch here. I'm gonna dig it up all my paint. So, yeah, there we go. That's our Alla Prima head study. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, uh, don't forget to hit that. Well, pretty satisfied with this overall. Uh, as Hal Al Prima studies go, it's pretty okay. It uh, definitely does the job. And I'm really enjoying it, so I kind of wish that I could spend another couple sessions on it. But that's not what we're doing here today. So last thing to do is uh, sign her. And I hope that you will consider you know, painting along and doing a version of her yourself. And please hit that subscribe button, the like button, and hey man, turn on those alerts so that you get a notification when I put out new videos. I'm gonna be putting them out weekly again. <laughs> I like the old days. And uh, maybe in a future video I'll explain why I haven't been doing videos for a few years, really. Here we go, Gloria. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.